That's awesome. Because what we speak about at Langton Foundations a lot is bringing in that younger generation, bringing in workers, right? Because as you know, I'm sure you are well aware that there's a lot more people retiring than there is coming into the construction industry. So how do you go about finding not not even just people, but like qualified people, whether whether they can be trained up really easily or they actually know what they're doing within a specific scope? You know, what is that method and, and what has been your challenges and what have you think have been your greatest successes? Yeah, I mean, we do it for, gosh, I mean, I don't know if we're in all 50 states. I think we're close at this point. So awesome. we, we, we're doing it in a bunch of different states, a lot of different industries. There's a formula. So, you know, when you break it down in essence, right, I got to find candidates. So I got to build a big list of candidates. Then I got to be able to vet them quickly, right? I got to mm-hmm. sift them. Yes, no, maybe they go here, they go there. Because if I don't get back to the candidates quickly, this process doesn't work, right? They go to the next job because frankly, you know, they're holding the deck, so to speak. Yeah. Then I got to be able to hire them, right? I got to give them the offer letter. How do I make sure they don't just shop it to their current employer and never leave? Like there's a formula to that. And then how do I retain them? So that's really what the course was. In terms of us doing this for people, we basically leverage a, a lot of different things. We leverage technology. We post to 157 job boards. We do oh, a wow. competitive audit. So we, we basically understand their local market and try and figure out, okay, what are your competitors doing so we can make you look better online? Then we do an internal audit. So we figure out, okay, you know, Mike's been working with you for 10 years. It's giving you 10 years of his life. Why is he doing it every day? And we try and figure out what does your team already love? We put that in the job description and we basically like we are a full service. We nowadays, here's what's interesting. If you're a construction company, you need two HR departments. Human resources, which is your day-to-day, your problems, right? Your onboarding, your growth, employee growth, all of that. And then you need a hiring and retention department. We become that second department. So we're getting in touch with all the candidates. We're scheduling your interviews. So all our clients do is tell us who they want to hire. And then they get pre-approved interviews or pre-screened. So we handle all the screening interviews. Like, do they have a driver's license? What's your, you know, how many years experience? Like, they're never doing that. They get people that are pre-vetted, show up on their calendar, and then they tell us yes or no. And then we handle, wow. you know, the reference check. So that's what we built because the industry needs, you know, it needed this service. It needed somebody to help because the small comp like the average people we talk to, they're like, they say, well, yeah, my marketing team handles some and my site super does some of the interviews. And it's like, nobody owns the hiring. And that's like when 80% of construction companies are struggling, most people focus on the 80%. What are the 20% doing that aren't struggling? That's yeah. what we figured out. Wow. Walker, tell them about your your app idea you had. We've had so many. Which one? <laughs> the one how you talked about hiring. Remember with the? Uh, it is not that big a deal. I thought you remembered. I'm trying. I I do. I'm trying to remember exactly. I wrote it down somewhere. I have to pull it back well, up. Well, the so the concept behind it, Matt was Walker was thinking about the hiring process through career fairs at schools because that's what oh. we went through. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and a lot of it was, you know, how do we obviously benefit the companies that are coming into the career fair, but also how can we teach some of the students just the intangible soft skills, hiring skills, what does it take to actually get through an interview? Because for us, Walker and I went through, man, there's a hundred something companies, right? And so you have to be able to sift through the different companies, you know, what are their values? Yeah. What is something that we can stand out to say in each interview? And if you have five or six interviews, it's a lot. Like within two days, you're like exhausted just from interviewing people, right? And so I like what you're doing because it's something really cool that's needed, right? They're like the hiring process in construction takes forever for one. And so to hear that you're making a big impact, helping people already in 50 states and allowing the, you saw the big need to condense it and make it quick so that you can grab that candidate before they go to the next place. I thought that was a, a huge bonus huge. too. So Yeah, I mean- yeah. We Go just, on. we, we would just wanted to build the thing. I built the thing like with the team, we built the thing that, that I needed most. Like that was my whole philosophy on it. I'm like, what do we genuinely need? There's an administrative burden. Most companies don't have time for, we wanted to solve that. Like, I'm, yeah. I don't like geofencing career video, like all this stuff. There's once I figured out all the stuff you had to do, I'm like the construction companies, like you want to build stuff. That's why you got into construction. You didn't get in construction to hire. And you know, it's, 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 yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really, really, it's an exciting time because the companies that do pay attention, 
I mean, you're, you're, you're building an asset. Your asset is your people, your team. A hundred percent. What do you think? Why do you think there's such a struggle, especially in the construction industry of finding people that, that want to make this their career? You know, I think there's a lot, there's tech and there's jobs that people would rather just sit at home. I get that. Right. But there's a lot of people that do want to use their hands and that they'd be, maybe they don't want to go to college. They want to go to trade school. Right. But they don't even end up going that direction because maybe they don't even know that construction is an option or they still think that it's dirty construction worker. You got to be stupid to do it. Right. That the same thing that a lot of people have, that the industry has not done a good job of, of marketing itself to get that image out of people's minds and get something else in there. So, you know, what do you think has been the main theme of why there's not as many people nowadays that want to do it? I, I did a keynote for skills USA which mm-hmm. I was a part of. I played second in the country when I competed at my vocational high school oh, cool. in that program. And there's a huge social stigma is one, right? It's like, I mean, my whole life I had that. And I yeah. talked about this openly. I was like, you know, I'd go in dirty. My dad would take us to a restaurant. When we were done, you know, it'd be 15 of us. And they'd be like, sorry, you can't eat here. What do you mean? You guys, mm-hmm. and then we don't, you know, you're too dirty. My dad would be like, I'll just rent the whole room. He'd have a, a quarter million dollars of checks in his pocket, Right. And, it, and they wouldn't let us in. And I'm like, this is crazy to me. It doesn't make sense. You know, we're, we're parking a $70,000 truck next to a $70,000 Mercedes. And, and it's like the, the, the average mark, you know, the, the average person doesn't understand this, you know? Mm. So it, it, there's a big social stigma, I think is one thing. And then I think for me, at least I've been paying attention to the fact that like a lot of business owners in construction don't really show off the lifestyle you can have. Like we're not, we're, you know, like I knew growing up, the wealthiest people I knew were contractors, amazing houses, boats, fishing trips, you know, like, you know, like private schools, all these amazing things that, that they wanted to do. But they were also taught like I was to be very humble. And so it's like when you're trying to attract massive people into an industry, yeah. why do people like tech? Why do people want to be real estate agents? They talk about like, it. Yeah, they're showing, you know, they're showing the cool watch. They're showing the lifestyle. They're showing this. And that that was the whole reason I became public. You, I, you would have never known who I was if I didn't look at this and think I'm going to contribute to a bigger issue. I had no desire to be in front of any cameras. I don't want anybody to know. I was taught to keep my mouth shut. I'm low profile. Like all of that is me. And, and, and I think a lot of contractors make millions of dollars, do super well, or even in the field. You know, I know people making six figures, multi six figures, like great lives but they're not showing up. They go home with their families. They spend time with their kids and like, Hey man, life is good. I don't need to, I don't need to sell anybody. You know, yeah. in my position out of college, I was afforded the opportunity to go travel, which you get paid more, but then also my wife is a nurse. And so we can go wherever Brassville and Gory wants to send us. Right. I can go to Los Angeles. I can go to Canada, whatever, wherever. Right. What do you think that is? Like, I know we were talking about the perception, but why do you think a lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, what they do. Is it because they also see that the world image of what construction is, right? So I'm like, I don't want to tell anybody what to make because they probably just don't care anyway. I think it's, I think it's that. And I just think it, construction at its heart attracts a very, like my heart goes out to the blue color. Like I grew, you know, like I connect with construction. Like I can, I shake a hand with someone who's in construction, male or female, like there's a connection. There's a yeah. bond, a certain level of service and humility and just human connection to to to, to us, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think like I just know so many people that so I, I did a, you know, I was doing some stuff like a homeowner project, kind of like, you know, there was like a filming project thing that somebody had asked me to do. And and I called up a couple of contractors, a painter, a plumber, right? These are guys never been on camera, never done anything. I was like, hey, I need a favor. They're there literally Saturday the whole day, right? Yeah. Never been on camera. They're in their 40s, 50s, 60s. Take time off from their kids. Like the best people I know are in construction, but at your root, you're taught, like you just said with your salary, like you're just taught to be humble. I I was the same way. Like mm. I think we're, we're, how do we get people to be excited without crossing the line? I think right. once we figure that out, but I do think we need to get a little loud. And, and like you said, like, yeah, you make six figures. You have this amazing job. Like I've had a fantastic life too from laying bricks and blocks and digging holes. Like those three things. And I got good at those three things, you know, Walker, I'm sure your story is very, like we all share that, but, but we're just, you know, like you summed it up, right. You're like, Ooh, this is weird. I did it, but it's weird. Like that's how we all feel. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something to the, 
you know, one of the one of the guys that we're friends with, his name is Jesse Hernandez. Matt, we've been doing a mental health podcast one per month since January, just trying to continue to help that construction. But one of our friends, his name is Jesse Hernandez, and just a great role model, awesome, very open about the struggles in his life, but how he's learned from them. Man, just the things that he's been through, I would never admit to other people, but he's written a book about it. Like he just, he's out there. Like he'll just tell you. And so it's freeing to see the vulnerability he's willing to take. But one of the things that he said to me that was life changing, he goes, humility isn't thinking of yourself as less. It's thinking of yourself less. For some reason, I thought humility was putting myself down. Right. And so it's, it's really not, I shouldn't be putting myself down. I should be the biggest champion of myself. Right. Like I should be the one that's, that's confident in who I am, but there's something about construction of just like, keep your head down. Don't say anything. Let's just move forward. Right. And yeah. so if I can speak into someone's life right now, I would tell them be confident in who you are because that's where you're, you're, you're there because of that. If that makes sense. No, I love that. I mean, I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. I think, I think just us, the entire industry needs people to be a little, you think of the military, right? The military is showing all kinds of cool. What do they show? Look at a military commercial. So you run in and you got the little, like, you know, a gun, you like camouflage, you're in great shape. Like you have to put a little sizzle to the steak. Like we got to start, you know, we got to start being a little bit more open with like, what are the perks of, of this industry? You know, and there's a lot. And, and I think there's a lot of cool people in construction and we're kind of a close knit community. I mean, it's, yeah, what what you're saying, I mean, what we're doing right now, just even talking about it and getting the word out, I think is huge. Yeah. yeah and, and sorry, Walker, I know you got some, but you know, that's one of the things like that I would love to do. I don't know if you know of Aaron Witt. He's like kind of like mm -hmm. the dirt world. He's putting out amazing content. Man, I would love to do that same thing for subcontractors and just learn like because you want to be able to capture it. I want to be able to show people like this is what Matt's crew does at Lang Block in Los Angeles, California. You can come be a part of this. This is what you could come do in Charlotte, North Carolina as a mechanical contractor, or this is what you could do in Birmingham. Out, Like I would love to show that because, you know, we talk about it and I think most men are, are visual thinkers anyway, right? They have to be able to see it to be able to go, okay, this is what it looks like. But, you know, there's a point that we have to get do better at marketing not only ourselves, but marketing what we do every day. And if, again, if we don't talk about it like we are right now, then the word's never going to get out. Walker, what were you saying? Well, I was going to say, Matt, you know, what is your, what's your goal? What's your next like five years look like with your consulting and, and with your construction company and just growing out there on the West coast? Yeah. I mean, my, my goal, I, I decided when I, when I decided to do all these things, I mean, you know, I figured out the hiring issue, life got good, making great money. I didn't really have to do anything anymore after that. Like I was, I was good. You know, I mean, I was, I put, I did an article. I mean, I was a millionaire at 26 or 27. Like I, life was very well for me. And I don't say that to brag. I say that like, I, I think we all need to find a mission that's bigger mm -hmm. than ourselves and what we want to serve. And I was kind of lost. Like I was like, okay, you know, I'm making money. Things are happening. Business is good. And that's what really inspired me to say, all right, what are the problems in the industry? You know, I felt like a loser my whole life. I was some, you know, dirty kid laying bricks. I'm like, well, how many other people like me, you know, are younger, you know, that feel that way. And so hmm. my big thing is how can I be a conduit for a conversation around the skilled trades? That's really, you know, and, and how do I solve things that are in the industry right now? Like hiring, for example, like we're, hmm. we're forging a path with hiring that is, I think is very unique. We've seen that just by the recognition. And I think the other side of it is how do we motivate the workforce? That's why I did the Skills USA speech. I mean, that's why I do a lot of the things I do. So my five-year plan specifically is, you know, I'll grow the construction company that will continue, but I'm not day-to-day -day in that. I mean, my thing is I want this, what we're building for hiring to be, you know, as big as it can get. And I'm excited for that. And then mm -hmm. I want more people involved in the trades. I want, mm -hmm. I want to see there's a surplus of people you know, excited yeah. about it. And I want to see lives change. I want to see more women in construction. I want to see, you know, veterans in construction. I want to see uh, every time I hear about this labor shortage, I'm like, how? Like, this is right. the best career path in the world. Right, right. Man, we we appreciate your time, man. We, we're we thankful that you spent some time with us. As we wind down, we always ask these two questions. My question to you is, if you were going to encourage someone to come into our industry, what are some qualities you think they should have? 
I think they need to follow a passion. I think they need to be drawn to something that they want to do regardless of the money and fall in love with. I, I started because I loved laying bricks. I hire and in part of my interview process on the my, my construction side, I look for passion. Great. Do you have any photos in your phone of what you built? That one question will tell you have a 90% cool. chance that you have a phone full of photos that you will be at this company three years from now because you're passionate about it. I think the passion, find what you love doing within the industry. And and, and if you need to move around a little bit, that's okay. Um, I like that I'll question. admit, I'll that's admit cool. my work phone has so many photos that people would think I'm like a lunatic. So. Secret. Um, my wife likes to joke that I have about three times the amount of photos of construction than I do of us together. So I get this it. Is, this is what I'm saying though. Like that's the sign of the passion. You know, I'm the same way. My daughter, I got more pictures of walls than my daughter. You know, don't tell yeah. my, <laughs> tell her, but it's like, I just love this. And that's looking for that and finding that passion. People being okay with that and tri trialing it and seeing what you like. That's, that's right. awesome. Matt, if you could go back, right, you've learned a lot. I don't know how old you are, but you're young and you've had a, a really successful career, right? So if you could go back to your 20 year old self, what would you, what advice would you give? Gosh, you know, my biggest issue was I didn't, I didn't dream big. I didn't have any, like, I didn't have any idea of what was possible. I was so fixed minded. I would encourage, I would say, you know, go out and think of the craziest thing that you want to achieve in life, like forge a path that is so just unique and, and specific to you. And don't even think about how you're going to get there. Just, just come up with a big goal and, and it could be about you or it could be about helping other people. Ideally it's both, right? It's like, it serves you, but it serves a bigger purpose. Mm. Cause I didn't do that. I didn't have anybody to help me set goals. Didn't have any, you know, huge role models. I had to seek all that out, but there's so much that's possible right now, especially with technology. Yeah, that's good. Matt, we've been working at a career coaching service that really just helps this next generation, right? Like that maybe they don't have that right they don't have someone that's willing to help them set goals and how can we come alongside people and show them like matt said if you have a passion for something that's great because that no you know you can do that thing for free or for really less but then how can we help them get the skills to become where they make a, a killer living and still be able to provide for their family or do whatever they want to do right and i think it's so imperative especially for this next generation circling back to our mission was man, if they don't have someone really coming alongside of them, a lot of them are most likely going to give up and, and turn into, I'm going to go work for Tesla or Google or like we're, we're competing against those companies. Like we don't have to talk about it, but we're competing against tech companies that, Hey, you're, you're, you probably are actually in your backyard. Right. And so, you know, if we don't a share the vision that we've talked about with them, B have someone come alongside them and help them understand this is what you could be doing. Now let's go, let's do the things to get there, man we're just going to continue to talk about this labor gap in my opinion. And it's just going to continue to get worse and worse, but Matt, we appreciate your time. Anything you would like to plug before we leave? No, I appreciate, I appreciate you doing, I love what it's you're doing. Awesome. Thanks, Matt.